What's up guys and gals, my name is Splattercat, we are here at the Nerd Castle with the next episode here at Nompton. I really enjoy this game. This is one of those games that I always put back on the shelf. And I, every single time I come back and I end up playing it another 40, 50 hours, just here and there. Just, I can't stop myself, it's almost compulsive sometimes. So, what we're going to be doing today is we're going to continue building up this location. In the previous episode we had remembered that this was supposed to be our flop house. And so we're going to make a new dormitory right here, which is going to allow us to finally vacate the first of our premises underground. We're going to say, nope, we're not sleeping on any stinky straw any longer. We are no longer going to get those weird, like, I don't know, if you've ever plucked a chicken before, when you lay down and roll around in straw, you get, like, weird bumps. I don't know, maybe I'm just allergic to straw or something, but it, it happens to me, and I find it to be very unpleasant. So I can only assume that all of my gnomes have found themselves in a persistent state of itchiness, which is, if you can't, ha if you can't not be itchy, oh no. I hear foreboding music on the breeze. Last time all of our goblins were killed by bears. So hopefully nobody goes to bed here. Let's keep an eye out. We don't know where they're gonna come. What was that made out of? A marble trough. Oh, it's made out of stone. Okay, I was under the impression that it was gonna be made out of wood. So in the previous episode, we had made ourselves a traug so that we could put all of our... <laughs> That's such an oddly spelled word. Have you ever thought of like trough? Like why not just T-R-O-F-F? -F? And then I feel like that probably would get the job done. It's like naming something Jeff. You don't name him like J-E-G-H. Like, I don't know. Maybe it's the O-U-G. I think it's the O-U-G-H. But anyways, you don't name him like, G you know, Joff can, or like Jeff can be spelled G-E-O-F-F. -F. Like, why? Why? Why is there a difference right here? But anyways, the word trough bothers me. It's one of those words like laugh. Where when I was a little kid and the first time I saw the word laugh, it imprinted in my mind because I had to read it in front of the class and I said that it was log and then everybody laughed at me I'm like damn it well now I'm the kid that doesn't know how to read can't read good so now I don't have any friends everybody gonna make fun of me nobody gonna pick me to play kickball even though I'm a pretty good pitcher if I say so myself but nonetheless that's my high school experience right there I, oops I gave it away now couldn't read the word laugh in high school no I'm just kidding whatever I think I'm gonna continue putting in blocks right here just to make sure that the gerb gets dern so, gentlemen, make sure that the blocks continue to get placed. Oh, all my guards just went to bed, too. Weak. We have scary music and all the guards went to bed. They should be here right now if they're indeed on the map. Let's pan and scan around a little bit. Maybe they got in a fight with another bear. That's what happened to our previous group of invaders, and it actually saved us a whole bunch of time. It's not that I don't think my guards can't handle it. Like, I'm pretty sure they're... If, if goblins show up, they're going to smack a bitch. Like, I know that's basically how it's going to go down. But... If I... The goblin has bled to death. What did this goblin get into a fight with? Oh, I don't have line of sight. That's why I can't... Did the bear kill them again? That is the greatest bear on Earth, although we do run the risk of the bear becoming a potential legendary bear if it ends up killing way too many goblins. Oh, the honey... A honey badger fought him. Okay. So that works out, too. So they killed a honey badger for me. And what I'm gonna do... So let's go ahead and butcher that honey badger. And then we're also gonna butcher the goblin corpse, too, so that we can get some more sausage. Because I love... I absolutely love bratwurst. I love chorizo. I love just about anything that is in... Well, I'm not gonna put it like that, because then you guys... Oh, it's Blattercat said in that one episode that he likes anything that's sausage-shaped. But anyways, I'm not gonna put it like that, because that seems like it'd be an oddly Freudian slip. But in... <laughs> In the case of self-deprecation, I'm going to stop right there, and I'm just going to allow it to happen. So, only one person has picked up a felling axe. I did assign another miner, but I haven't given any mining jobs lately, so maybe they're just kind of keeping it on hold. Over here, how much of this job has been completed? Absolutely none of it. So, we need, like, paddings and some other stuff to get done, and I'm not so sure... We have a bunch of string right there, which are the constituent parts of the padding that we're going to need in order for all that armor to get done. Are we out of cotton? That would be the one thing that I would think, because we're in winter, we may have gone through all of our cotton. So let's have a look here and find out. Ah, oh, we are. We're out of cotton, so that's what the hang-up's going to be. So we're not going to be able to complete anything until the end of this season, which is bad. That is not good. That's a major bottleneck that... Yeah, that's a bottleneck that I hadn't foreseen, and that's going to be something that is going to cause us problems in the future. So what we want to do now is, because we can't make any armor... It may be in our best interest to go through and start weapons production. So I am thinking that that's what I'm going to start off by doing. So let's go ahead and after I get all these blocks placed... There we are, the blocks are placed. I'm not going to place that one until I'm absolutely sure. I know it's not lined up properly, but anyways. 
So we need to make ourselves, since we're not doing it right, or since we're not doing anything with our armor right now, you'll forgive me as I kind of stumble around what I want to say. We need to make some of the metals. Oops, not a metal worker. We need a weapon worker. Where is that? Workshop and under metal and then a weapon smith and there it is. So we will make ourselves a weapon smith, which is going to be the next part of our ascension to awesome gnomish godhood. And what I need to do over here is I'm actually going to... Where do they make they make the anvil from the forge? All right, so the anvil make it out of copper. Like I really, really, really don't want to waste bronze on an anvil if I can help it. So we've got 150 logs left remaining. Luckily, we're not running out of dirt. Of all the things, oh dear God, is he beating up my cow? Seems like kind of a dick move. All right, guards, go and get him. So have they already done damage yet? Let's find out. Yeah, they've pretty much beaten the piss out of him. That was like a two-second combat, and they have already beat him until I'm sure his kidneys are no longer functioning. They knocked his weapon out of his hand, they sweep-kicked him, it's basically just ninja mode up in here right now. And now he's getting triple-teamed on, they're just finding an orifice at this point and just letting it fly, so... He's done. Done like dinner. And that went very, very well. Let's go ahead and take a look at the combat recap here. And we're gonna see if anything, like, super awesome happens. So we've got, the goblin has died. And so what we want is the combat log here, the eighth day of winter in the first year of our gnomish lord. And we want to go for the goblin right here. It also involved the yak. I don't know if the yak was... The yak kicks the goblin, hitting him in the neck. So wait, did we break his armor? Let's find out here because... He had chest armor on and it said that he suffocated to death and so he shouldn't have been able to... He shouldn't have been able to suffocate if he had chest armor on. My only assumption is that somewhere along the line his armor got destroyed and a yak kicked him in the throat. That seems like it would be worthy of a weird gravestone. Like if I got kicked in the neck, I want you guys to notarize this. So if I ever get kicked in the neck by a yak, I want some hilarious... I mean, I feel like a limerick is really kind of the worthwhile adventure here. Like you have to put a limerick on my grave. You have to. It would be the most hilarious thing ever. I mean... It would help if my name was Jack, though, or something that rhymed with yak. I mean, it would it would be difficult if your name wasn't. I think we could make it work if I had the time to sit around and think about it for a bit. I can't freestyle like that. Like, I don't have any natural flow that has been blessed upon me by the universe. So I would make up lim like a limerick right this second. But I simply don't have the skill nor the talent. So unfortunately, we're going to be left staring at gnomes walking circles around the compound. We've only built one bed, and the other part of that is going to be, oh dear. So we're not going to get the beds done either until our next cotton harvest comes in. Weak. And even once the new cotton harvest comes in, there's no guarantee that we're going to have enough cotton to get the job done in the first place. So I was actually resting on... I was resting and hoping on the fact that we would have enough to get... <clears throat> that we had enough cotton already. Unfortunately, it doesn't appear I sold a bunch of it. That's how I screwed myself. I think we had like 250 cotton, and I sold like 200 of it, not thinking about the fact that winter was coming. So I think that's how I got myself in trouble. We're going to go ahead and get rid of that right there. And all of our other facilities appear to be working perfectly fine. Let me go ahead and place the next stone up here. I will say that I strongly dislike building terrain. In case you were wondering, I hate the fact that I have to place like one block at a time. This may have been fixed so that they periodically check their pathfinding to make sure that they don't lock themselves in or on the walls or anything. But the last time I played, you weren't able to queue up walls very quickly because you had to do one brick at a time, otherwise they would... Let's test it out right here. We'll see what they do. If they queue up this one first, let's go ahead and do that. And we'll see if they check to see if they'll trap themselves or if that's just something that hasn't been fixed yet. If we see that they're going to place a block right here, we'll go ahead and pause the game and cancel it really fast. If I could just place this entire next layer... Ooh, I don't know. We'll see what happens. Yeah, so there it is right there. They still haven't fixed the pathfinding, which is irritating. I mean, that's been such a long-standing thing. That's such a... It's such a major ease-of-life thing that it's just like, why this needs to be implemented, like, right this second so that I can build upwards a little bit faster without having to place, like, one block at a time. It's not that big of an irritation. It's just like, having played the game for over a year now, the fact that that still hasn't been fixed is just kind of... I don't know disappointing I guess I'm not mad I'm just disappointed <laughs> and so oh no I forgot to leave my space for I guess this will be a wild a windowless compound now that's disappointing I was gonna put windows in on the half mark on each of these because these are five to the door right here 
And so I guess I could put in a dirt staircase and knock him out real fast and then put him in, but... Eh, we'll do it later. It'll be okay. So I'm gonna focus on building this for right now, just making sure that gets done. We're not on the ninth day of winter right now. There's not gonna be a whole lot going on. We got plenty of, well, not plenty of food. Maybe I should spend a little bit of time foraging. So let's send out our farmers to do a little bit of foraging right now. And we're gonna tell them to get going down here. There's also some cotton. Let's go ahead and help ourselves. I'm gonna help me help me right now. And we're just gonna say that all of this needs to be farmed out with regards to foraging because if we can get some more cotton that means that at least some of these jobs will get done and it'll alleviate the bottleneck somewhat because the bottleneck is pretty bad right now I mean we've got a lot of things that I'd like to have done before our second year hits namely I'd love to have the armor done I'd love to have most of the beds done and unfortunately we really just don't have the time to wait for the next cotton harvest to come through we've got a 7 by 7 so we'll get ourselves about 50 cotton from the next harvest 49 to be more specific and to prove that I know how to do math because the second that I say 50 somebody's gonna be like uh 7 times 7 is 49 splatter cat you need to go back to primary school or something and I'm gonna be like mm -hmm. I know I know my mom said that I should just log it off but you know we keep it going with the skills that we have and so that's gonna replenish our food supply. That'll get us up easily, I think, to about oh 195 or so. We don't, we aren't gonna have any problems making it out the back end of winter. We've got our first successful year, and this is really the first roadblock that you're gonna find yourself facing whenever you play Nomoria. Is can you survive your first winter? I think your first winter tends to be a bigger terror to newer players than like invaders or anything do. Although, with the implementation of like goblin raiders and things, it has gotten a little bit worse. Basically, the goblin raiders, unless they are engaged. They'll come in and they'll just like steal a bunch of your stuff from how I understand it. I've never seen one function as of yet, but they're out here trying to function to quote E40 and so we are going to stop that right now. We will not have any fat beats dropped in the middle of Nompin if we can help it. I mean, we prefer to keep this a musicless society. Even though they're gangster, we keep it musicless. We prefer to channel our hatred and our gangsterism from inner, inside. Like, we don't like to get that from any other source because then it feels contaminated. It feels very, very contaminated. Contaminated. So there's enough cotton, yeah, that's gonna be, I don't know how much cotton that gave us. It couldn't be more than maybe 25, but it should be enough to at least get some of these little jobs going. Yeah, it's definitely not gonna be enough to finish that off, but it'll be enough to at least make the list a little bit shorter. Not to make a gnomish pun right there. <laughs> they're short, it's because they're little. So anyways, on this top floor, continue placing blocks. So let's go to our build menu. And we shall continue to place a singular block at a time. One. Two. And we can place one right there too, because I think it's not even lined up with the staircase. And then once this is done, we'll get rid of these dirt stairs. We'll use these ones right here to put in flooring over the top of it. We may put in another layer on top, just so that we can have, I don't know... Maybe some kind of storage facility up here? I don't know. I'm not really sure about the way that I want to orchestrate this right now. That little black stripe through the middle of my building didn't look as good as I thought it would. Like when I build in other games, putting a little black stripe of, like, stripe of materials through the center of the building can sometimes make it feel like it has like a motif or a little bit of an artistic styling to it. Unfortunately, I was kind of flying blind on this one. I've never tested the artistic theory as of yet, and so... I think in order to make it work, I'd have to put in a goblin has been spotted, a, a gobelin. And so there goes our guards who have lost sight of said gobelin. Oh, there's another one too. That's funsies. Alright, well, get out there and cause some mayhem, farts. You are the first action reaction team, so... Oh, did he one-shot him? That's good. So basically he ran up and just totally donkey punched him to death with one swing. And now they're tired from too much murder, so they're going to repair to the downstairs dormitory. It's always important to rest up properly after you commit cold-blooded murder of another sentient species. It was self-defense. Let's put in marble blocks right there, and I'm on the wrong layer. And so as to avoid stairs. We will repair our lair, and then place the block right there. And then stop rhyming in case you get scared. 
Because falling into rhyme, I do it in real life too. Like, I'll just be sitting there talking. I'll be like, you know what? I could construct this sentence with like five rhymes in the middle of it. And so I'm just going to do it. And I'm going to see if anybody calls me out on it. Thus far, nobody does. I did it in the middle of Target the other day. I did it with a cashier just to test it. It's kind of like playing, you know, like in Super Troopers where they play the, the cat game where they're like, right, meow. It's the exact same thing. You're just trying to see how far you can go before somebody asks, like, what the hell you're doing. And if you're, like, out of your mind. And so there it is. We finally completed the second lair. And so now that that's all done, the thing that we want to do is we'll get rid of these lamp, or I'm sorry, these ramps. Those aren't lamps. Ramps are not lamps. I know what things are. And so on this layer, we're going to put in another brick floor. And I think what I would prefer to do, actually, is I'm not really positive how I want to do this. What layer am I on right now? I need to be up on... So there's layer zero, one, okay, so it counts weird. So we need to be, like, right... That's not the layer that I wanted. I'm having trouble visualizing right now. Oh, that's even better. It's not going to allow me to... There we go. Let's cancel those out. What an odd situation. There we go, the job was placed. Okay, so we got that done now. And that was me just like placing things in the wrong spot. It should be on the second layer that we place this. But sometimes things get a little bit wonky in my head and they don't work out the way that I want them to, so... We need to build floors here. Oh, I hadn't thought about that. Okay, so what we're going to need to do... Well, this is kind of strange, actually. It's actually auto-setting itself downwards to the previous layer is the problem. That's what I'm noticing, is that when I place it right here, it's actually counting as though it's going to this floor back here, because if you saw that last job, it told him to tear up the floor back here. And that's a little bit weird, and that's something that I don't want to spend too much time fiddling with during the course of the episode. I'll try and fix it in between if I can. Let me try one more time. And if I can't get it... There we go. I think that's what I'm going for. And then once we have that... It'll make our lives a little bit easier. So we'll start putting floors in. And they won't walk on any of these blocks. That's like the important distinction I have to make. For whatever reason, the top of a block made of blocks is totally alien to them by comparison to a floor made out of blocks. Not sure why that decision was made with regards to the mechanics, why you couldn't just walk on top of... I, I'm willing to guess it was probably an oversight in the early programming and there was just like nothing you could do about it later on. It's just like built into the game. I've had things come up like that a few times when I was programmer. I was like, well, based on the architecture that we've designed in the first four seconds of designing this entire thing, we can't fix this without starting from scratch. And so if that's the case, then eh, can't do anything about it. Can't do anything about it. So let's dig... And basically what this is going to do is we're just going to put floors over the top of this so that it acts as a roof. Then what we'll do is we'll build like a little shed or something on top of this to give it a little bit more contouring. Make it look a little bit nicer. And then after we do that, we'll be able to maybe, I don't know, maybe we'll put like weapons storage in there or something so that it's close to the guard post. I don't know. I haven't decided. Maybe the top floor will just have more dormitories in case we get some more gnomes. Okay, and so there's our weaponsmith. They're over here, presumably crafting something okay so they've gotten two of the bronze gauntlets done they've got a couple more going I don't know if we're gonna have enough cotton to get the whole thing done because we are going through it pretty rapidly right now well we've actually got a couple of stacks laying around it might be okay I'm difficult to, I'm difficult to kind of eyeballing and figuring out numerically like what I have the resources for so while those jobs get done on the bottom floor we'll start weapon production as soon as we get them completely and totally armored out. And then as you can see, they've actually put on little shoes. If we zoom in and we pause, he's got little brown shoes and they've got little bronze shoes right there. So they've got their little bronze booties, much like a little baby child. 
Let's build some terrain. We need to keep the flooring going here. And this is going to be a slow process as well because I have to do this manually just like everything else. And so what we'll do is we'll go like so. And then once that's done, we'll put in those floorings. And everything should be 100% loverly after we get that done. These floors have value, one thing to be aware of. So each one of these is actually pretty... Well, it's not a lot. I mean, if you're looking at cumulatively how much your kingdom can be worth, we're sitting at 14,000, so we are kind of approaching a danger zone right now. Once we hit 20k, my goal would be to have a bunch of bronze weapons so that we can defend ourselves because they will start coming with like ogres and cyclopses and ogryclopses and all kinds of weird hybrids. I think the goblins just start putting things in a room and just seeing what will breed with each other and be like, well, this one's got an innie, this one's got an Audi. let's see what happens, hands away, and they just kind of wash their hands of the whole issue. We have our weaponsmith already built, which is nice because that's going to allow us the opportunity to instantly jump from one type of production to the next right after this. How are we doing on metals right now? That's my other concern. So let me take a look at my stocks. We may have to go through a brief period of rapid mining. Oh, we're actually out. Okay. So what we need to do now then is we actually need to set up everybody and get them going on some more tin farming. And so this is going to be one of those kind of boring activities that some people like mining, some people don't. I do like mining. I just like watching the ground change because I will it to be so. I don't know why it's so entertaining to me to watch that happen, but we have three miners now anyways, and God, look at the speed at which she's able to plow through there anyways. And so with the remainder, how come I'm not seeing three miners? I know I have three miners. Is the other one working right now? Okay, so the other one's busy at the moment creating our armor. That's fine. I would actually prefer that sort of delegation of work simply based on the fact that it's nice to have somebody hang back and do the jobs that need to get done while other people... Oh, never mind. They're down here now. Well, in that case, now that the delegation is done, it means that the work will get done more rapidly anyway, so the mining queue shouldn't be as nasty as it was in the early game. Oh, we've got a cavern. Hold on, let's track that thing down and figure out where it is. So one of the big cheaty ways that you can figure out where caverns are is you can go to your mining menu, and if you go out like that, you see how we've got that weird discrepancy right here in the middle? There's kind of like that anomaly. That's a sheer drop right there. We want to watch out for that. We really, really, really don't want to open that up because monsters will flood through it unless we can presumably... Or at least we can guarantee that we can get light down into the chasm, which I can promise you is going to be impossible. Some of these chasms go from like the 11th layer down to the 50th or 60th layer. They are enormous and they just go on forever. Now, in certain cases they can be nice because they can allow you to scout for the materials that you need down below ground. Like you can say, okay, well we absolutely 100% know that there's gold on the 27th floor and there's iron on the... 20th floor and so we can only go down to those floors if we're hunting for those specific materials However in this case I think that the possibility of a swift death at the hands of a million different things swarming out of the underground Are probably I mean the possibilities of us just being annihilated by digging too deeply and too greedily to quote J.R.R. Tolkien I Think they outweigh kind of the benefits that we will glean. We also don't want to open up the edge of the map as I recall I think opening the edge of the map was a bad idea. I don't remember. I'll look it up. There's a lot of tin along the edge of the wall right here. I will look that up in between episodes, but I seem to remember, really, when I first started playing the game, I remember somebody being like, yeah, you really shouldn't dig along the edges of the map or something like that, and I don't know if that's still a problem or if that's a thing that I have to be worried about. And God, look at them get the work done with those wheelbarrows. I love you, little gnomes. I love you. So we've got the torches in place where they need to go. I would assume we're probably going to need another one right there somewhere. Over on this side, we've got a bit more tin going, so let me get that all taken care of. And then I'll take a head count while we sit and wait and figure out how much ore we've harvested. We've got 60 tin ore and 11 silver ore. So I'm going to continue. I'm going to do a whole bunch of tin first. And once I get done with the tin, then we'll go back up and we'll get as much copper as we can, and then we'll get back to producing. The silver right there is not going to be incredibly useful until we've got a jeweler who's going to be ready to provide us with the things that we need. We should have a woodworker out and doing that right now. Okay, so they just need to make a few more sticks and then that'll get done. How is this job going? Did they just bail out? They bailed out on me. Okay, that's fine. They're getting the mining done anyways, so we don't really have the materials to finish these giant work orders that I've been giving out. 
So I think I'm going to break the episode off right here. My name is Splattercat. Thank you for joining me in the Nerd Castle. I'm going to finish mining this out a little bit. And then I'm also going to... There was something else that I wanted to do in between episodes. I was going to check on whether or not you can dig on the edge of the map without things attacking you. Because things spawn from the edge of the map. So I'm sort of worried that'll create like a row of spawners that we'll have to deal with sooner rather than later. And I don't feel like dealing with any more issues in the early game than I have to. And then the other thing that I was going to do is I may... I don't know. You guys say that you don't want edited stuff, but there is a very vocal minority that wants things edited, but I think what I'll do is I'll try and finish this building in between episodes. Well, maybe not. Maybe I'll just keep things moving along. It seems like we've got plenty to do right now before the end of the year, so I don't want you guys to miss the beginning of the month either. That's the other thing that I'm worried about, so we li we missed the last one, or the beginning of the season, so anyways, I'll see you guys in the next episode. Hi, do guys. I'll see you later.